Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well tonight, and welcome back to tonight's second half. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. My merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman, Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeffrey Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. Finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe, click the like button, and please leave a comment. It really does help, and guys, it definitely matters. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with tonight's second half, shall we? Briefly before we get into tonight's second half, uh, earlier today when I posted the first upload, I had to take it down. YouTube gave me some kind of hard time about something. I had to take it down and go through the video and put it back together. Um, I wanted to get it up as quickly as possible because I had had it up for about 10 minutes before they said that there was some kind of music in it that I was not allowed to use. Um, so I, it was like a 30 second thing. So I had to take it down, delete that and then put it back together. What happened was I had put the video together last night and I had a piece of paper with all of the spots, the uh, time slots that I wanted each kind of um, video to be in. And I ended up shredding it in my paper shredder after I had put the video together last night. So I had to go and do it by heart or by what I remember, excuse me. And uh, so there is three videos in there, but the, the last video is somewhere at the end and it was supposed to be at the end, but I put it at the, like the 21 minute mark. So that's the video that's supposed to be at the end. I apologize. I'm clearing it up for those people who um, had sent me some messages telling me that it's not, that it didn't show up. But um, yeah, it should have been at the end. And I figured I looked at it and I was like, man, I cannot take this down again and repost it. Um, because by the time I realized that had happened, it had been two hours. So I was like, well, people understand if they can just, you know, they'll watch the video, see this video, you know, at the 21 minute mark and then hear, oh, this is the next, you know, and just piece it together. Uh, but anyway, that's what happened. I just wanted to correct that and, uh, let you guys know. So let's get on with today's frightening encounters. Today's first encounter. This encounter happened a few years ago when I was 10 years old. I have three encounters. This is the first one. I have family near the LBL that I've visited for years now. The area my grandpa lived in is heavily wooded with a long gravel driveway. I was always allowed to play outside, but my grandpa made it very clear to be in the house before sunset. I would play around the house till dusk all the time. At the time, my grandpa had a large German Shepherd mixed with a Great Dane named Sergeant. Well, Sergeant was a protective dog who would never leave my side when I was playing. I remember playing in the back of the property. I was kicking a soccer ball against an old tool shed with Sergeant lying down on the stone walkway. I guess time got away from me and it was getting very dark. As I kicked the ball one last time, I heard a long, drawn-out growl from the right of me. It was Sergeant. His hair was standing on end, looking at the woods. As I looked, I could see a shadow of something moving around in the woods. As it drew closer, I could see its shape. It was down on all fours, staring at Sergeant. 
At this point, it's almost pitch black outside. I remember Sergeant starting to bark ferociously. I guess this upset the creature because in return it growled back. The vibration from that growl shook my ribcage. The animal took a step out of the tree line and bared its teeth at us. About this time, I heard a loud boom followed by an intense ringing in my ear. My grandfather had shot at this creature. I don't remember if he hit it, but I remember it tearing back into the woods. My grandfather then pulled me back up the walkway to the porch with the sergeant following me from behind. Grandpa was really angry with me. He was yelling the whole time back to the house. I've never heard my grandfather yell. I started to cry. As we entered the house, my grandmother looked like she had seen a ghost. I was sent upstairs to go to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to my grandparents talking about what had happened. My grandpa said, I never thought it would come this close to the house. I think I hit it this time. I'm not sure. My grandmother then said, you better hope you didn't hit it. Don't you remember what happened last time you shot at it? What it did to Daisy? Daisy was an old dog that they had owned a few years ago. I was always told that she had ran away from home. I put the pieces together pretty quickly that that thing butchered Daisy and left a pile of what used to be her around the house. Well, the argument died down between them. In about 20 minutes of them being silent, everyone started to rest and I went back to my bedroom and tried to sleep. I think two hours of me sleeping, I was awoken by Sergeant barking at the window. And about 35 yards up the hill looking directly at me was that creature. It had yellowish amber eyes, the pupils looked blank of compassion, only full of evil, and they were fixed on me. I couldn't move, I couldn't speak, I couldn't even breathe. Then all of a sudden I screamed. As soon as I did this, the creature stood up on its hind legs and ran further up the hill, dipping behind a ridge. My grandfather came running up the stairs with his deer rifle, flung open the door and came into the room. I asked him what that thing was, and he said it was a bear. I could tell he was lying because he was in a cold sweat and on the verge of crying. He told me not to be scared in a shaky voice and told me to go sleep with my grandmother. I awoke to the smell of bacon and eggs in the morning. My grandfather was sleeping heavily in a living room chair with his rifle on his lap, looking at the door. I was not allowed outside for the rest of my stay, and the last two days of my stay were uneventful. I gave my grandparents a big hug, and my parents picked me up, and I went back home. It brings a lot of emotions back up that I tried to hide away, but the story about the LBL brought my emotions back to light. I'm literally shaking sharing this story with you now. My grandfather has since passed, but my grandmother is still living at that house, and Sergeant has since died as well. He lived to be about 15, so the old boy lived a healthy, long life. I know now why my grandfather was always so strict about the woods. I've since been told his story. If you'd like to hear it, let me know. Thanks, Jeff. It feels good to get that off my chest. My best friends don't even know about this story. Only my close family knows. The other two stories are when I was 16 and 18. I'm 24 now, by the way. This encounter happened on the LBL. At the time, I was staying with my grandparents for about a month. During this time, I agreed to a camping trip to the LBL. The LBL is a beautiful place. The lakes are so peaceful and the trails are always nice and the nature helps me clear my mind. My girlfriend at the time owned a camper for the sake of keeping her private, we'll call her Jessica. I'm an avid outdoorsman. I love nature. I have the deepest respect for nature. I will always be in the woods. Jessica, on the other hand, doesn't like the woods. She loved spending time with me. The first day was uneventful. We hiked for a little bit and went to the lakes and went back to the camper. The second day, Jessica and I went hiking for a lot longer than we expected. We ended up back at the camper for a few hours of daylight. We just sat in the camper for a little bit to gain some energy. Jessica said she wanted to see the stars at night. Me being tired from all the hiking, I reluctantly agreed. 
We exited the camper to the moonlight and proceeded to start the almost 20 minute walk to the lake. About 15 minutes into the walk, I noticed how silent it truly was. The normal sounds were absent, no crickets, owls, not even the wind was blowing. I didn't pay much attention to it, me being 16 at the time, I was focused only on one thing. We made it to the lake and had to walk down to the shore a little ways. I then set the blanket. After an hour of watching the stars, things started to heat up. I then noticed the woods and the lake were absolutely silent. Usually when the woods go silent like that, a predator is usually nearby. That's not all the time true, but it's a good indicator. I started to get this overwhelming feeling of being watched. All of a sudden, that primal fear I felt at my grandfather's house came flooding back. Just about this time, Jessica pointed to the tree line and said, I swear I saw something big move behind that tree. I instantly jumped up and grabbed her hand and told her we needed to leave right now. She was confused and wanted answers. I knew what that thing in the woods was. I proceeded to grab her hand and pull her toward the trail. We got onto the trail, only for my worst fear to be confirmed. I looked back to the meadow to see this thing low to the ground, slowly crawling towards us. I then told Jessica we needed to move faster, and I kept looking back to see where it had gone. Two minutes into the trail, I looked back to see the creature getting on the trail. I looked at Jessica and told her not to look back down the trail, to keep looking forward. As soon as I finished this statement, she, didn't, she did exactly what I told her not to do. She saw it. Jessica became frozen in fear. I had to pull her forward to try to keep her going. The creature at that time was about a hundred yards down the trail. When Jessica snapped out of it, she started crying profusely. I tried to get her to go forward. In that five second window, I lost track of it. All of senses kicked in overdrive, trying to hear or see where this thing had gone. Eventually, she started moving again. We made good time, maybe five to ten minutes left on the trail. My senses were in high time now, still trying to see if I could find where the creature was or if it was fouling us. I suddenly got hit with the smell of rotten meat and dog piss adjacent to me. My heart sank when I saw its shadow maybe fifteen yards off the trail. I told Jessica to move faster, and she stood still, demanding answers. So I yelled to her, move faster! This shocked the creature's ears twitched like a dog's would. The creature sat there for a little bit, then all hell broke loose. The creature stepped back onto the trail and Jessica locked eyes with it. She froze in fear again for two seconds. Jessica was standing there frozen with fear. Suddenly she screamed. This creature then stood on its hind legs to its full height and roared at us. The sheer size of this creature is out of the world. The path was easily five feet wide where he stood. I was 16. I was 6'1". I thought I was tall. This thing was easily three feet taller than me. I grabbed Jessica by the hand and we ran as fast as we could up that trail. I felt tears streaming down my face. I started seeing my life flash before my eyes. I thought to myself, will I ever get to see my family again? Will they ever know what happened to me? About this time, I snapped back to me running. I looked up the trail and saw the trailhead. I heard the thing chasing after us. It sounded like an 18-wheeler in the forest with a full head of steam. We burst into the clearing with Jessica hot on my heels. My lungs felt like they were. I was breathing lava. I didn't hear it running after us. When we got halfway through the clearing, we didn't stop. We kept running. So we got to the camper. I slammed the door behind us both. We were crying profusely. We sat in silence for what felt like hours. Then Jessica broke the silence by saying, what was that thing? In between sobbing breaths, I knew exactly what it was and I told her I didn't know. I cuddled her trying to calm her down for 30 minutes. She then fell asleep. I tried to stay awake, but I fell asleep with a knife in my hand. I awoke to heavy footsteps on the gravel. My heart skipped a beat, and I heard whatever it was do a large sniff and walk a few laps around the camper, then leave. 
I soon fell asleep again. I awoke to the sounds of birds chirping. I sat there for a few minutes and heard nothing. I exited the camper and instantly got hit with the strongest smell of old dog pee, but 50 times stronger. I heard Jessica start to stir in the camper. I walked back into the camper and gave her a kiss and told her not to talk about what happened to anybody. We gained our composure and left early in the morning. Jessica and I are still close. She's one of my best friends. I talk with her almost every day. That happened almost 10 years ago, and we've only talked about it twice. She flat out refuses to talk about it to this day. I tried to ask her about it a few days ago, hoping I could get some details from her side of the story. She shot me down within seconds. I've always loved the outdoors. I've been in the woods ever since I was six. I love hunting, fishing, hiking. This encounter happened when I was 18. My grandpa owned a large chunk of property. We worked hard to try to keep the property healthy year round. I remember learning about this buck, which was a good sized boy at the time, a 12 pointer with a beautiful spread. I studied his scrape lines and his morning routine. The day finally came, opening morning of rifle season. I got up around 4.30 in the morning, eager to get to my stand. I hit the woods in full stride, getting to my stand, hoping I could intercept the big buck on his way to his bed. The crack of dawn started to come through the trees. The birds were well and alive. The forest was active with the normal sounds until about seven. The woods went dead silent around eight. A few minutes went by and I heard crunching of leaves on the top of the ridge. Walking the scrape lines, the deer left my heart started beating fast, thinking I was going to bag this monster of a buck. I soon realized that it was not a deer walking toward my stand. The animal sounded too heavy to be a deer. I got an uneasy feeling followed by a deep sense of dread and danger. I soon smelled the same smell I did a few years ago. I started to panic. My heart felt like it was beating out of my chest. I realized I had my 270 with me, a few spare rounds in my pocket. I got a sense of confidence. The creature got about halfway down the valley, maybe 60 yards or so away from me. I didn't make a sound. I went as stiff as a board, hoping the creature wouldn't see me. He got right in front of my stand, about 70 yards away. This creature turned and instantly locked eyes with me. I panicked. I pulled my rifle up and looked down the sight. The creature growled at me. The vibrations were strong enough for me to feel them through the metal bottom of my stand. I loaded a shot and the creature growled, got even louder. My mind told me not to shoot. It wouldn't help if you made this creature even more upset. I lowered my rifle and the creature started to pace around the base of the tree where my stand was. After a few laps, the creature kept on going down the pathway. I stayed in my stand for what felt like hours. I knew the creature was not gone. I still had that feeling of being watched. Eventually it subsided and the wood started to come back to life. I eventually made my way down from the stand. I didn't hunt for the rest of rifle season. Looking back on it, I have zero idea how that creature saw me or knew about me. I sprayed my scent removal kit before I entered those woods. I was wearing camo, and I had my top of my stand covered with a blind. I felt powerless even with my rifle. He knew what rifles were. I don't know how, but he definitely did. I still am a little hesitant to enter those woods. I have never returned to that back of that property. I only hunt the front side now. Hey Jeff, sorry my grandfather's story took so long to get to you. I've had a lot of family issues recently and I've not had a chance to type it out. This was told to me by my grandmother. She is now older in age, so some of the details may have been left out or a little blurry, but I'll do my best to share what I was told. My grandfather was as stubborn as a mule. I've watched that man chase bears off that back porch. He wasn't scared of anything, or so I thought. My grandfather's first encounter happened when he was 12. He grew up on his farm and worked on that farm day in and day out. 
His farm used to be full of farm animals. He used to have chickens, cows, goats, horses. That's how he made his living. Around five in the morning, he was awoken to chickens squawking and their wings flapping frantically. So the first thought that came to his mind was fox or coyote. He grabbed his 12 gauge and ran to the chicken coop, which at the time was behind the house and down a walkway a little ways. As he rounded the bin, he saw this massive hole in the chicken wire. He described it as if a man took a head start and jumped clean through the side of the coop. In the inside, chicken guts and feathers laid everywhere, thinking the animal that had done this probably heard him coming and ran back into the woods. He headed back to the shed to get a bucket and shovel and pick up the mess. The shed is about 200 yards walk in front of the house so he started the walk to the house and got hit with the sensation that he was being watched at this time the sun is barely starting to break through the sky and all you can see is shadows he soon realized that he is being stalked by something he said he became froze with fear when he realized that he was being circled by this creature He put a round into the chamber and shot a shot at it. This made the creature irate and straight up upset. As soon as he shot, he started to run to the house. My grandfather's dad heard the commotion and came outside to see his son running up the path, followed by what he thought was a bear, and he shot his 12 gauge at it, pelleting it in the face, causing it to run back off into the woods. That was his first encounter for everyone that wants to see a dog man. Let me tell you from personal experiences, you just better stay out of the woods. You know, it might not be as lucky as myself or my grandfather have been. These creatures are faster, tougher, and as stupid as it sounds, I 100% believe they hold grudges. The dog man my grandfather encountered was gray and was maybe six feet tall. From the shot to the face of that dog man, its wound scarred over. The next few years, his farm became a living hell because of an irate young dog man. Hey Jeff, it's been a minute. I don't know if you remember, but I sent you some of my encounters a while back when I lived near the LBL. All those years ago when I snuck out with a girl and had the encounter at the lakes, little did I know that I'd end up marrying her. My grandparents that owned the property since then have passed, and I was one of the few people that visited them going through their final days. They put the property in my name. I've lived in that house with my wife for about two years now. I still go hunting on the property regularly. Last year's deer season was pretty uneventful. I moved spots more toward the front of the property, as I still get very uneasy when I go into the valley. I found comfort in a high-powered motion light, but I will say my heart always drops at night when I see those lights kick on. I've cut the woods back from our home about half an acre on all sides. My last dogman encounter was probably the best chance I've ever had at studying these creatures. I was in my tree stand enjoying the first morning sun peeking through the sparse tree line that split my front property fields when I got that all too familiar feeling of dread. It took me about 30 seconds to pinpoint the source of this feeling. About 35 to 55 yards down that same tree line where my tree stand was, out walked this brownish gray creature. It didn't fully walk out into the field, only to the edge of the field. It walked down the tree line until it found a nice plump bit of grass maybe 20 feet off the game trail. That's when it tucked itself behind that patch of grass. Honestly, you think something like that wouldn't be hard to see. But if I didn't see it walk over there and sit down, I don't think I would have been able to see it. After it being there for 20 or so minutes, this creature stretched out and sprinted down the tree line into the other field. After sitting in my stand for what felt like forever, I finally got the sack to climb down the ladder. I was carrying a 308 and a 44 on my hip during this deer season, and I still feel as if they were water pistols. 
I have a few more encounters as well. I have a deer station that I cut on when the harvest, when I harvest a deer right beside the platform in the shed. In the shed, I have three deer fridges. One night, I heard the shed being run through, so I took my 308 onto the porch and shot three times above the shed. On the second shot, a large black figure that moved so fast it looked like a blur took off out of that shed and back into the woods behind my property. All right, everyone, I'd like to thank you all for all of your support and kindness. Uh, truly does mean the world to me that we are growing like the way we are. It's unbelievable. And um, with that, May the Great Spirit watch over us all and may he guide us down that path that we call life. Stay safe, everyone.